I imagine my hands as like the crank on like an old timey engine. And it's like, by using my hands, I crank up my like idea engine and my inspiration. And like, that's what actually turns into the art. And then once what you're making with your hands is imbued with your intent and vision, then it's your art. That's like this magical transformation process. And once you're making art, then you're an artist. <laughs> my name is Alexandra Beaumont. I use she, her pronouns and I'm a textile artist. At that point, I hadn't really been thinking of myself as an abstractionist, like, you know, using that moniker, but I was starting to experiment more with non-representational work in my textiles. So I thought, okay, this is an interesting opportunity to kind of throw my hat in the ring and see, see if it fits. It took me a while to consider myself an artist. I feel like I've always been an outsider. I grew up in South Carolina, but neither of my parents are from the South. My father is Jamaican and my mom grew up in the Midwest. So we did not have deep roots in the South. I come to textile work through fashion design. That's what I studied in college. Even though I left that profession, I just had all these fabrics lying around. And then after a decade long relationship and a divorce, I picked up these fabrics that I had and I kind of went through this practice of like reconstructing myself through the use of cloth and motif and imagery and text for my journals. My grandmother, you know, who grew up in on a farm in Iowa, made quilts with her grandmother all by hand. And I definitely connect the textile work to women's work. And then on my father's side, his grandfather was a tailor in Jamaica. So I went from feeling like you know, pretty much total outsider where I was growing up in the South to being one of so many in New York, which is beautiful because you can really be yourself. It's like New York doesn't care. <laughs> you can just be whatever you want. Um, but at a certain point, it just that felt too big, too overwhelming. And then moving here, that being said, it took me a long time to find community here. And it wasn't until I connected with other women of color that I felt like I belonged. I think I had just finished reading Parable of the Sower. So it felt kind of kismet. <laughs> I mean, you read that novel and then and you can read the history of black people in America or in the Western Hemisphere broadly think like, how can anyone survive that? Why would anyone like, how do you find the drive <laughs> to um, to keep going? It's a very powerful thing. It's weighty. There's beauty in it in that endurance and that will. And I really love Gregory's curatorial statement that echoes a feeling that I was having in making my work, thinking about diaspora and the loss of being removed from your place of origin, but also trying to reframe it as well, it's like when you blow the seeds off a dandelion, you know, and next year there's a whole field of dandelions. This dispersion that is also a, catter a scattering of seeds and that's really beautiful and really powerful. Abstraction helps me just get closer to the materiality of the work I'm making. So, I mean, part of why I work purely with my hands and the cloth is the like real embodied experience of the material and motif that anchor me in my Jamaicanness. This work is connected to some like research I was doing into Jamaica at the time of independence, 1962. In creating these pieces, I was also using materials that engage my sense memory of Jamaica, which which ties back to the question of blackness for me in my in my own experience, you know, kind of able to separate the social narratives of what it means to be black, maybe separate some of the weight of history, even the weight of present, particularly here in Minneapolis from the ex my experience of blackness and just kind of sit with and ruminate on what 
what feels right in my body, what feels true to my own story. And then to see the through lines in the other artists' work and the through lines in Gregory's curatorial statement, I want to contribute to the dissolving of, you know, the structures that deny us our humanity. And I think um, abstraction, I mean, all art making is an opportunity for that.